Good morning, folks. We've got a clustered Earth-facing solar disk. We'll check in on the comet. We've got some cool news and some very not cool news as well. Let's get started over at spaceweathernews.com. We'll find the last 24 hours on our star. Although sunspots have not been flaring, they are center disk today, and we have a number of plasma filaments around them along with the southern coronal hole bringing up the southern trail. In 304 angstroms, you can see the thin filament ropes. Each one is held in place by magnetic forces only, and they can erupt with very little warning. Hopefully, they'll stay as quiet today as the solar wind has been, which does continue declining in intensity, and geomagnetic conditions are expected to remain quiet for another three days until the solar wind from that southern coronal hole arrives. Been a nice four-day stretch without larger quakes, but we should get at least one big one before that stream arrives. Let's come to the comet. Mac Holt's imagery was lagging last night, but this morning we are fairly up to date, and from Earth's view, the comet has begun swinging back around towards the sun, at least from our perspective. We do have two more days of visibility before this one departs the Soho view. Little note for those new to comets, the reason it appears there are two tails off the comet is that there are. The larger one bending behind is the dust tail, and the thinner one pointing straight away from the sun is the ion trail from the most energetic solar wind interactions. Folks, it was just six weeks ago that the sun woke up with X-class solar flares. Many of you will remember the view here in 131 angstroms from SDO. Hinode caught the eruptions as well. This is the one that occurred just behind the limb out of view. Apparently, Goes R caught them as well. This is its first view of the flares, not too bad, and pretty close in quality to SDO, considering that the processing is at a lower level. The satellite should be operational as goes east near the end of the year, and also they will need its drift there to come with a bit of a tilt because its tilt is currently off. Dead-on view has the sunspots cutting across the sun on SDO, northern two spots at the same latitude. However, we can tell goes is tilted with the two northern spots at an angle and the flare zone a bit too high, too far north by comparison. Folks, one year ago we shared some great news. Western Antarctica got one of the most important wildlife preserves in the world. Two weeks ago we shared the continued plight of East Antarctic penguins after no chicks made it in 2015. It's happening again this year. And one day ago we got bad news. They will not be putting the East Antarctic Preserve in place. And rather than a link to that sad article, I've got a link to the organization's website who is responsible for putting it in place maybe let them know how you feel and pass it along to rights groups, etc. Last but not least, when we expressed concern over fraud in the March of Science, the reaction was not so positive or even kind. However, the truth is coming out slowly. Surely not all the way there yet, but if you read what has happened so far, I'm pretty sure you'll be able to see down the line just fine. Website members, today's podcast is coming up in a few hours, and there is also a new members page at suspiciousobservers.org slash chat. Very self-explanatory and a hundred times easier to have a conversation than on the forums. We've got the wind maps and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now. It's 4.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.